Hello guys, in this video I'll show you how you can interface your ESP8266 Wi-Fi module with your PIC microcontroller. So the PIC microcontroller that I'm using here is PIC 16F877A but you can use it with any PIC microcontroller if you understand the concept over here. So this is the schematics of the project and here is the PIC 16F877A that I was telling and uh, I have used an LCD over here which could be used for debugging purpose. So let me give an overview on the circuit. So PIC 16F877A works on 5 volt and ESP8266 works on 3.3 volt. So we need to provide 3.3 volt and 5 volt respectively. So I have used LM317 to construct a 3.3 volt voltage regulator which will provide enough current for the ESP8266 module. So you can proceed with your own uh, if you have a 3.3 supply source lying around you can use the same but make sure that it can supply around 800 milliamps and here i have used 7805 to provide 5 volt for the pic microcontroller and another thing is we have to make a logic converter because the pic operates on 5 volt and the esp operates on 3.3 volt we have to make a logic converter that converts 5 volt to 3.3 volt you can use any logic converter modules out there but for simplicity i have used a potential divider over here and this works as well. So this potential divider will convert 3 volt from the RX pin of the PIC microcontroller and provide 3.3 volt to the TX pin of the ESP module. So how do we establish a connection over here is by using the USAT module that is universal synchronous and asynchronous receiver and transmitter module. So what we do here is the PIC sorry the ESP module by default comes with a firmware which has been uploaded by the manufacturer itself so this firmware can be used to program the ESP8266 module so how you can program is you can use 80 commands and you can program this ESP8266 module so what we are doing is we are going to send those 80 commands from the PIC microcontroller to the ESP8266 module by using a C USART module so let's see how the hardware looks like I have already assembled this hardware and I'll show it to you so this will this is how the hardware will look once you complete the schematics so here i have the lcd and this is the esp module and this is the pic microcontroller module so as i said this is the lm317 which will provide me 3.3 volt and this is lm sorry 7805 which will provide me 5 volt for operating the pic microcontroller to power the PIC microcontroller, I am using a 9 volt battery and this ESP module is directly powered by a 12 volt 1 amps adapter. So you can either power them using the same battery if you have a 12 volt 2 amps battery lying around you can make it as a single board and power them with the same battery or you can make this connection over a breadboard so it is up to you. So this is how I have made because in this previous tutorial while getting started with the ESP8266 module you would have already made this and this PIC microcontroller will be used in a PIC microcontroller tutorial series. So I have used the same board just for your convenience. So now let's get into the programming section. Okay, this is the program. If you are completely new to PIC microcontrollers and ESP8266 module, then uh, this tutorial won't make much sense to you because it is a bit of advanced concept. So I would recommend you to go to circuitdigest.com. Go to your browser and type circuitdigest.com. In here you can find all related tutorials. So if you are new to ESP8266 modules, then type getting started with ESP and you can see getting started with ESP part 1 and part 2 using 80 commands so depending upon your level you can go to go through these tutorials and equip yourself with all these things as you can see I have used the same board over here which I showed you just now and if you want to learn about PIC just click so if you want to know how to interface your PIC with LCD just type in PIC with LCD and click on search And you will get that respective tutorials so again if you see i'll be using the same pick board over there also so it will be easy for you to follow up all those tutorials now let's get back to the coding section okay so i have made use of a library and i have included it as a header file so when you download this program from the website you will be getting it along with the header file and when you compile it it won't be a problem to you so i have included the header file over here the LCD spin definitions are given over here. 
so these are the functions which we used in our LCD programs so let me minimize all those things because we have already went through it in the previous tutorials I have used the LCD here to make sure that the ESP8266 module communicates properly with the big microcontroller it is just used for debugging purpose it is not mandatory to make your ESP2 work with your big microcontroller so in this program what I have done is I have initialized the ESP8266 module I have made it to work in mode 2 which is as an access point soft AP and also I have configured the access point to a particular name and password so in this program I have named the SSID as circuit digest and the password will be 619.07123 so you can give your desired SSID and password so let's see how I have done it so basically if you are using this header file then all these functions will be well explained in the article which can be found in the description of this video so I'll just explain the sections which I have used in this program so this is a sample program just to make sure that your hardware and your program is working properly so this is not a complete project this is just a sample program to make sure that you have established a successful communication between your PIC and your ESP mode so first let us see if the ESP is communicating properly with the PIC microcontroller to you to make sure it is communicating properly we have to send a command called AT and your ESP8266 module will reply you with OK so if you want to know all the existing AT commands then you have to head to this document which is the instruction set of ESP8266 module which can be found in the description of this video so if you go through this modules you'll get to know all the AT commands that can be used with this ESP8266 module so go through this if you're making a big project with your ESP8266 module then you have to go through each and every line of this document to know what are the AT commands available and which you can use for your project so here I have used to communicate just some basic commands like when I send an AT it will reply me with an OK so what happens here is I will wait if the ESP8266 module is started, it should reply me with an OK when I send an AT. So I'll wait till it sends me an OK. So if it sends me an OK, I'll print ESP is connected on the LCD. If it is not sending me an OK, I'll print ESP is not found to the LCD. And then I'll set it as an AP. How do I do it is I'll use this function ESP8266 underscore mode 2. If you want to know what's behind each and every function, you have to head to the header file. So just give me a second. So if you go to the header files over here you will get ESP8266 functions and if you click over here you will get all the codes which are present inside those functions so if you want to get deep into it you can open this document and see what is actually happening inside those functions but if you just want to use it so this is how it works so ESP8266 underscore mode in the bracket if you give 2 then it initializes the module in the second mode if you give it 1 it will initialize the module in the first mode and if you give 3 it will initialize the module in the third mode which is both soft AP and station so here I have a, I have a programmed it to be an access point and then when it sends me an OK I'll print ESP set as an AP and this delay of 1500 milliseconds is given so that we can read what is displayed on the LCD otherwise it will happen so fast that we won't be able to know which process is being executed right now and then we are going to configure the soft AP as I said before my SSID name given here is circuit digest you can give whatever name you wish to and the password will be 619 not not 7 and 123 so once that is done the ESP module will reply me with an OK and once I receive an OK I will print AP is configured and inside the while loop I do nothing once the AP is configured I just stop displaying AP configured and that's all the program is stopped with that so now let's see how we can simulate this program in a Proteus I'll open the Proteus simulation file here again the simulation file will also be present in the article which I mentioned before you can go to that article by using the link in the description so as we all know this ESP8266 module does not have the design file in Proteus so we have to simulate it with using a virtual terminal so this is how the connections have to be made and when I click on play button the virtual terminal pops up it says circuit digest ESP8266 with pick and then it displays the LCD displays ESP not found because the ES the pick does not receive an OK till now so it gives me an 80 and it waits for that OK command so what I have to do is I have to click over here right click and make sure that echo type character is clicked and then you have to type in OK so now as soon as I type OK the LCD changes itself to ESP is connected and then it gives me the next command 80 plus CW mode is equal to 2 so what this does is it has set my 
ESP module as an access point but still it does not display anything on that LCD because the ESP module has not confirmed anything in return so in order to confirm it I have to type in again as ok so once I done it the LCD displays ESP is set as AP and now it is configuring the access point with the name circuit digest and the password 61907723 so again it does not display anything on the LCD unless we confirm it with an OK so this OK will be sent by default by the ESP module since that library is not present in Proteus we have to do it on our own so give OK and it displays AP is configured so this is how we simulate the program now let's go ahead and dump the program to a big microcontroller and see how it works in the actual hardware so let me open up my cam and here we are so as I have said earlier I have already programmed the PIC microcontroller to the program which I just explained to you right now so now let's go ahead and power the PIC microcontroller the ESP module is not yet powered on let me power on the PIC alone first now the PIC is powered on and you can see ESP is not found because the PIC microcontroller has not received an acknowledgement from the ESP module yet because the power is still turned off here. Now let me turn it on. As soon as I turn it on, you can see the commands are being proceeded. So it showed ESP has been connected successfully, then the, it is set as an AP and now the AP is configured. That's all. The program has stopped now. Configure, after configuring the AP, the program will stop. Now if you go into your Wi-Fi section, Now if you go into your Wi-Fi section, you can see the name Circuit Digest over here. So this is what I say SSID that we have programmed before. Now let's go to it and click on connect. And the password will be the password which we had configured it before. So the password was, what was it? Uh, yes, the password was 619.007 and 123. So let's try it. 61 nine not not seven one two three click on next no. so if it has programmed it correctly we should be able to connect it to this SSID now. it's taking a long time yes finally it is connected same but the connection is limited because i don't have an active internet connection over there so it just says that it is connected and the connection is limited so now the program is working properly so everything is verified so this is how you interface a big microcontroller with your esp module and uh, that's it for now guys thank you Now it is configuring the access point with the name circuit digest and the password 61907123. So again it does not display anything on the LCD unless we confirm it with an OK. So this OK will be sent by default by the ESP module since that library is not present in Proteus we have to do it on our own. So give OK and it displays AP is configured. So this is how we simulate the program. Now let's go ahead and dump the program to a big microcontroller and see how it works in the actual hardware. So let me open up my cam and here we are. So as I have said earlier, I have already programmed the PIC microcontroller to the program which I just explained to you right now. So now let's go ahead and power the PIC microcontroller. The ESP module is not yet powered on. Let me power on the PIC alone first. Now the PIC is powered on and you can see ESP is not found because the PIC microcontroller has not received an acknowledgement from the ESP module yet because the power is still turned off here. Now let me turn it on. As soon as I turn it on, you can see the commands are being proceeded. So it showed ESP has been connected successfully, then the, it is set as an AP and now the AP is configured. That's all. The program has stopped now. Configure, after configuring the AP, the program will stop. Now if you go into your Wi-Fi section, now if you go into your Wi-Fi section, you can see the name Circuit Digest over here. So this is what the SSID that we have programmed before. Now let's go to it and click on connect and the password will be the password which we had conferred it before. So the password was, what was it? Uh, 
yes the password was 619.07 and 123 so let's try it 619.07123 click on next no. so if it has programmed it correctly we should be able to connect it to this SSID now. taking a long time yes finally it is connected same but the connection is limited because I don't have an active internet connection over there so it just says that it is connected and the connection is limited so now the program is working properly so everything is verified so this is how you interface a big microcontroller with your ESP module and that's it for now guys thank you